Previously on the wonderful world of death, everything in the Disney universe is connected by both Walt and the specter of death. Death. Another well-known Disneyland legend centers on claims that the park is a popular destination for scattering cremated remains. That one is true. Is true. Is true. Is true. Is true. <laughs> We've examined Uncle Walt's complicated relationship with death, all the motherless Disney protagonists, the ghost trains, the myth of the cryogenically frozen Waltzicle. But today it's my turn to shine because we're talking about real death at Disneyland. You hear about families sneaking into Dodger Stadium with their loved one's ashes or taking the forbidden hike to the Hollywood sign. But the golden standard of places you know you're not supposed to scatter ashes but do anyway is Disneyland. Rides are shut down and evacuated because someone dumped Aunt Jenny's cremated remains in the It's a Small World ride. Aunt Jenny never got to travel, so I decided to bring her here to It's a Small World and scatter her ashes in international waters. That ride is so weird. I can't imagine that surreal hellscape is anyone's idea of resting in peace, but different strokes for different folks. Speaking of surreal, y'all aren't gonna believe this, but this video has a sponsor. Um. After eight years on YouTube and not a single sponsor, all of a sudden, not only a reputable company, but a product I already use swooped in to partner up. And that company is none other than Audible. Do the air horn noise again. As many of you know, we're trying to raise money for our nonprofit because part of our mission is to pay it forward and donate to other, perhaps less visible nonprofits, like past recipients, the Colibri Center, and Pet Peace of Mind. And this partnership with Audible gets us closer to that goal. I already use Audible, so I'm happy to share what I like about it with you. You can go to audible.com slash mortician or text mortician to 500-500 and get one free audiobook, two free Audible originals, and a 30-day free trial. What free audiobook should you get? Now, you have endless, very valid choices here, but allow me to recommend Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs on Audible. Yes, listen to my dulcet tones read to you about postmortem predation. The URL and code are down in the description, so go get me for free. With an Audible membership, every month you'll get a credit good for any audiobook, regardless of price. And if you don't use your credits, they just roll on over to the next month. And you get two Audible originals, so you can sit in LA traffic like me and still be learning. Any audiobook you get from Audible is yours forever. You can go back and re-listen anytime, even if you cancel your membership. And you can also return an Audible audiobook anytime. No questions asked, but don't return my audiobook. I worked very hard. Anyway, this is cool, right? We'll announce at the end of the video where today's donation is going, all made possible because of this sponsorship with Audible. Um. People want their ashes in a place that was meaningful for them. That might be the ocean or a rose garden in the backyard, but for a lot of people, that meaningful place is Disneyland. According to the Wall Street Journal, park custodians said that it's about once a month that people are caught scattering ashes. And those are just the folks that are actually caught. Dead men tell no This would be an excellent place to scatter your mom's cremated remains. Right here in the Louisiana Bayou. That was cool. I'll give you that. That was a really cool ride. There was also so many opportunities to scatter cremated remains. It was all water. You always had an opportunity at any time to take out a little vial of mom and kick it over the side into the water. I'm not suggesting you do that. I would never suggest that you do that. It's illegal. But I see how it's possible <laughs> on that particular attraction. The most popular places to scatter? Pirates of the Caribbean, in bushes during fireworks displays, and top of the list, the Haunted Mansion ride. 
One park employee stated, the Haunted Mansion probably has so many human ashes in it, it's not even funny. I don't know, I think it's sort of funny. Before doing the scattering, people have also been known to sneak grandma into the park in a special purse or bag and hold it while posing for a final post-mortem portrait with granny's favorite character, all unbeknownst to Mickey, of course. Before being scattered, grandma may also be treated to a final trip on her favorite rides before becoming part of the colors of the wind. Or more likely vacuumed up and sent to a landfill. I'm just saying. Now, we know Disney does not want you to do this, but what is the actual law? In California, your family is legally allowed to scatter your ashes on private property, as long as two rules are followed. One, that you have the permission from the property owner, and two, that the remains are scattered in a manner so they're not distinguishable to the public. If you're dumping mom's pile of bones into the bushes, clearly without asking Disney if you could do so, yeah, you're breaking the rules. Now, as I tell people, there aren't any ash police. No anti-scatter vice squad. You might very well get away with it. But businesses aren't used to bones and ashes. And what you think of as a nice gesture may turn into an obscene amount of trouble for a lot of people. Take the opera lover who scattered some of his dear friend's ashes in the orchestra pit of the Metropolitan Opera. Some of the musicians thought it was anthrax, a terrorism call was made, everyone's evacuated, and this performance and a second performance were canceled to the tune of many thousands of dollars in lost revenue. The happiest place on earth already has so many lines. Don't also shut down the haunted mansion entirely for everyone visiting that day. But Caitlin, Disneyland doesn't ignore death altogether. They're offering Disney funerals now. I saw it on Facebook. That's not a real thing. But Disney hospice is real, right? Sorry, Bibbidi Bobbidi Bye will not be available anytime soon. These stories have both been widely shared, but they're from a satirical Disney website called Uncle Walt's Insider. They say no one ever dies at Disneyland, and they're right. Because of how the medical legal system works in the state of California, it's sort of a bureaucratic thing. That's how I like it. I love making bureaucracy fun, so here we go. <laughs> Actual deaths do occur in the park, which brings us to yet another big part of the widely accepted Disney mythology. The claim that there's a company policy that no one is allowed to actually die on Disney property, and that victims must be removed from the park before being declared dead. As much as Disney has a cold iron fist of cheerful power clamped over the Magic Kingdoms, even they can't stop death. People have been declared dead in the parks. In 1984, a plane crashed in the Epcot parking lot. In the following year, there was another recorded death in the Disneyland parking lot. And there are deaths due to visitor negligence, which basically seems to translate to being a teenage boy making bad decisions with their not yet fully developed brain. In 1964, a 15-year-old boy from Long Beach unbuckled his seatbelt while on the Matterhorn bobsled ride and attempted to stand up near the top of the mountain. The boy fell out of his sled, hit the track, fractured his skull, and died three days later. Granted, he didn't die in the park. More on that later. In 1967, a 17-year-old boy was killed on the People Mover when he slipped while jumping from car to car and was crushed to death by oncoming cars. History repeated itself in 1980 when another teenage boy was also jumping from car to car on the People Mover when he fell into the track, was crushed by a car, and his lifeless body was dragged several hundred feet before the operator stopped the ride. Thankfully, Disneyland closed their People Mover in 1995, but it lives on in Florida. Something that does play into the no one dies at Disney myth is that when incidents do happen, victims are usually transported to a nearby medical facility. The same as if an accident happened anywhere outside of Disney parks. You're going to try and save a person who's been severely injured. If someone were to die on the way to the hospital or shortly after they arrive, they aren't pronounced dead at the scene of the accident where the actual cause of death occurred, but at the hospital. Although the cause of death would still be listed as something like blunt force trauma due to Disneyland ride, or stabbing by Minnie Mouse. Oh, Mickey! The place of death, where the doctor actually declared it, would be the hospital. For example, just this summer, a contractor working at Disneyland was killed after being hit by a falling steel plate. He was rushed to a nearby medical center where he was pronounced dead. There's even a store called Memento Mori in the Magic Kingdom where you can buy death certificates and other death-themed souvenirs. 
If only obtaining an actual death certificate were so easy and fun. Disney parks may seem like a magical utopia that exists apart from the real world, but the reality is they aren't. In 2018, a survey revealed that 75% of Disneyland employees cannot afford basic living expenses. Many of them experience food insecurity because this $130 billion company does not pay them a living wage. Reports estimate that one out of every 10 Disneyland employees have been homeless in the past two years. This can lead to tragic consequences, like in 2016 when a woman who had worked at the park since 2007 was found dead in the car she had been living in. I feel like I should take the ears off for that part. It's evident from recent interviews that many Disneyland employees are deeply conflicted. They love their job, their co-workers, and some of them are even huge Disney fans. But how do you reconcile something that you love and enjoy with an inhumane business model? For those looking to do a deep dive on Disney deaths, you might enjoy the Disney Death Tour website, which serves as a counter-narrative to Disney's hyper-mediated spaces and muted depictions of death. Disneyland does not allow for memorials or references to death within the park going so far as to ban the words in memory of on memorial bricks out of a fear they might remind park guests of death. Disney does acknowledge real death in one unique way through its support for organizations like Make-A-Wish Foundation that fulfills requests of children and people with severe illnesses. Thanks again to Audible, whose sponsorship today means we're making a donation to The In-Between, a hospice that serves the homeless population, giving the most vulnerable among us a place to die with good medical care, support, and housing security. Support us by going to audible.com slash mortician or text mortician to 500-500 and get your free audiobook. It helps us and it helps others. And to the patrons who always thought we deserved help to make these videos possible. YouTube isn't a bad place all the time. So even though Disney doesn't want to remind us that, we're all gonna die. It's gonna happen, and like it or not, this Disney video is helping us help people toward a good death. Maybe. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. Fun, so. If you're dumping mom's pile of bones in the bushes, clearly without Di clearly without asking Disney if you, if you could do so, clearly without dis asking Disney if you could... Oh, so, ah, no battery! The place of death, though. The place of death. But the place of death where the auction... Sarah and Caitlin... Nope, that's a... Um... So thanks, Uncle Walt. <laughs> I'm just drunk. It's poison! Disney's head.